Yo, what's going on guys? It is Tom and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Mick Schumacher career mode. And it's been a while since I've done this series, but um, basically uh, there was a time where I thought I was going to stop the series after recording the last race in Singapore, which um, that's the second time this season now where uh, Austria and Singapore are two races that I recorded, which um, basically I had recording issues after the race once they were recorded during replay cams. And essentially it meant that I couldn't upload another two videos to my channel. Um... Austria could let pass, but Singapore was a really hard one for me. I, I made a lot of bad tweets, you know, I was really, really angry at the time. And I've taken some time to think about it, and I've decided to continue the series. I, I was honestly thinking of stopping it. And um, it's just annoying because, you know, in Austria we did win the race, and in Singapore we came in second place. And you guys never got to see that. So, uh, you know, it's just annoying that um, things work out like this. But either way, that's the reason why this series hasn't been on the channel that often, because I've had a few issues, and I've been not particularly happy with how the series has gone thus far. But either way, I'm going to try and continue on and try and make the series work for the rest of the season and um, hopefully we can have no more issues and try and uh, run out of the season smoothly without having any more problems. But um, it was a really tough time and I uh, hope you guys are welcoming back the series on the channel. I spent a long time, but if you did miss any of the previous episodes, then I would urge you to go check out the playlist in the description down below and also the latest episode in the link in the description down below just in case you want to get up to speed on the series. But um, either way, we're going to try and power through this now and I want to stick to one episode a week, maybe two, because uh, there's no career mode this week so I might do another episode later on next week but um, either way we're now going to focus on the task in hand and uh, so far Malaysia around 15 in the season I believe and uh, Mick's getting himself down to the nitty gritty of practice trying to get the car shaken down and to uh, get a good setup on it and uh, hopefully get a good feel for the car around this circuit and uh, straight away the mana car seemingly working very nice around this circuit struggling a little bit in the middle section due to the lack of downfalls on the car but the mana is now the fifth best car on the grid so in other areas the car makes up for a second performance through the fast corners and the car was feeling really really good which left the team very positive for qualifying and um, hopefully you can try and convert this good uh, practice form and this overall momentum into a good qualifying result. So jumping into qualifying here on the Saturday evening at Malaysia, the sun was starting to set slowly and the, the, the sort of lights were like dimming a little bit and uh, it was a nice little dusk sunset for the setting of qualifying here at Malaysia with no rain expected throughout the entirety of the session. So we're going to be dry conditions throughout and uh, jumping straight into Q1 on the medium tyre. Mick's going to try and get through to Q2 on this tyre and we're going to see how well he does as he comes across the line. It's going to be P4 for the time being, just behind his teammate Pascal Verlein. Nothing spectacular in terms of a lap time, however, that lap would see him through comfortably in P7 with Verlein eventually getting first place in Q1 there on the soft tyre. So very impressive there. A lot of people opting to go for the medium tyre and then uh, moving into Q2 now, moving onto the soft wall yellow tyre. And uh, so far so good on the lap, pretty comfortable, obviously m making a step up from the medium tyre, the soft would only be much quicker. And as we come across the line, Mick's going to get up into P4 and comfortably make his way into Q3 there on the yellow wall soft tyre. And uh, that's going to be the tyre that he starts to race on now for tomorrow's Grand Prix. But as you can see there, Pascal Verlein also getting through in P8 there. So both mana cars once again into Q3 and Ferrari barely scraping through there, both of their cars in 9th and 10th. And then moving now into Q3, into the lap itself, the lap that counts. And uh, so far the lap, I've got to say, uh, really good exit out of the final corner. As we go into the first corner, Mick gets his first apex absolutely horribly wrong and uh, sends him off wide by quite a bit. But however, he pulls the car back in for some pretty good return speed into the apex of turn two. And now getting the power down through turn three, absolutely flat out through this section. And we now wait for the first sector split. And so far, Mick is two tenths up on Max Verstappen through the first sector. So pretty good so far, considering he made that mistake in the first corner. Otherwise, it could have been ahead of a lot more. As we now go into the second sector, the place where the mana is weakest because the front end just doesn't want to just go into the corners. And you've got to try and have a couple of bites of the cherry with the steering wheel. As Mick gets all out of shape, all out on the ragged edge through the corners. We now flick it through the double apex right hand again onto the curb loop, which is going to help. Uh, sorry, it's going to basically distract from the fact he's going to have a good lap and uh, severely compromise his lap a little bit. We now go into the hairpin, second gate corner, just about catching the apex, but running very wide, scrubbing out wide on the exit. And now he's three and a half tenths behind Verstappen through the middle sector. As we now fling it into the beginning of the final sector through this long swooping right hand, a very tricky corner there with the late apex. As we now go into this sort of left and then swooping right chicane into the Palama corner, which is a very tricky corner because you can run out very wide. Uh, you know, i.e. Sergio Perez 2012 and we now get on the power on the exit of the corner Mick opened up the DRS onto the back straight and we only got one more corner 
to negotiate now. Mick's got to try and pick out the 100 meter board on the right hand side for the break point of the final corner. He drops it down to third gear, opting to actually get the nose in in second, probably carrying a little bit too little speed through there. Could have carried a little bit more. I mean, I get on the power and across the line, it's going to be P6 for the Malaysian Grand Prix qualifying. And I believe that is where he's going to finish the session after everybody eventually finish their laps and there you go Pascal Verlein getting P7 just behind him so luckily Mick is going to be his teammate for P6 and top honours in the Mana Garage but um, overall that was qualifying Rosberg taking pole of Lance Stroll in a very impressive second place and for example people like Lewis Hamilton down in P5 they were both for the Ferraris only in 9th and 10th but overall a very good qualifying session here and hopefully Mick can convert this 6th place into a better position in the race So here we go. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon here at Malaysia for the Malaysian Grand Prix. Round 16 of the season, not 15 like I said in practice. A little bit of a mistake there and a uh, very nice track. It's a beautiful track and uh, a shame that it's going to be on the calendar for much longer in real life F1 because it has produced some pretty classic races and uh, it's a shame that tracks like these do come off the calendar. But either way, we're going to focus on the races and prepare ourselves for the five red lights for the Malaysian Grand Prix for round 16 of the season and it's going to be... Lights out and away we go and mix straight away the brilliant initial launch off the line getting past the Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo following Lewis Hamilton now as we make our way into the first corner Pascal Verlein going to the inside and uh, picking up the inside line into the first corner which is going to help him get a few positions off the start as he goes up the inside Mick's going to have to sit in behind his teammate through the first corner as we now go through the left hander of turn two and so far it's, it's a Williams uh, Manor Williams Manor sort of a uh, field train right now Stroll and Verlein battling out side by side through turn three and the mix is going to make the move he's going to try and have a sniff up the inside of the pair of them into turn four but he just has to back out on the brakes as Verlon goes up the inside of Lance Stroll and now Mick's going to pick up the traction a little bit through the exit but not good enough to get a run on a Lance Stroll so right now Verlon makes a brilliant start from P7 up into P4 jumping a couple of Williams cars in the process and now Mick is right behind Lance Stroll can he get a good run out of here yes he does he's going to try and go up the inside of Lance Stroll but he just can't make it work up the inside and Stroll holds on to the position for now and Mick's going to have to sit behind the young Canadian driver for the time being but so far a good start holding his initial start position and we're now going to move on to the end of lap number one and Mick's got a great run on Stroll on the exit of the plummet corner here he's going to go to the outside also Verlain as well not going particularly quick down his back straight he's going to swoop back to the inside pick up a little bit of toe and then go cut back to the inside on Verlain he can Verlain go around the outside yes he does beautiful defensive driving there from uh, Mick's teammate and Mick's just going to pick up the traction and uh, basically just out at square um Stroll when it comes to the power and put out the corner and now look at this a great run on Pascal Verlon on his teammate and Mick comfortably makes the move before the first corner and Stroll is going to be very cheeky and try and pull off a move on Verlon also into the first corner in the process thanks to the gap that Mick opened up for him there in the overtake but uh, moving all the way to the end of lap four now and Rosberg and Verstappen were scrapping it out on track pretty fiercely and this is actually going to open up to a gap for a possible battle between these guys on track as you can see now going on to the pit straight Mick's going to get an absolutely incredible run and get past both of the drivers through the DRS and just the incredible straight line speed of the mana car and take second place in the Malaysian Grand Prix. Absolutely incredible fight back through the field. And, uh, you know, from starting P6 on the grid, this is some incredible pace and an incredible opening stint here from the young German driver in his rookie season. As we move now on to the end of that particular lap, Mick's going to come in for his first stop of the race following the race leader Lewis Hamilton into the pit lane for their first stops, respectively, of the Grand Prix. And here we go then into the pit lane. Let's see what happens here in the first pit stops of the race. Lewis coming to his pit box, hitting his marks, and looks like he's just had a very quick pit stop and come out ahead of Mick Schumacher there unfortunately Mick couldn't hold him up and cost him a little bit of time but he goes on to the uh, hard tires so different strategy there personally the strategy that Mick's going to follow for this Grand Prix is going to be um, a hard hard so very conservative yet very um, hard compound chosen for the strategy and as you can see Mick just comes ahead of a stop in there and a little bit of a pit stop battle and stays ahead of him for now in track position but um, like I said two hard stints to the end whereas Verstappen goes on to a soft tire so a bit of a split strategy there between these two guys but uh, either way we're going to see how these final two stints unfold on the on the orange wall soft uh, hard tire sorry and as we move on to lap six now Hamilton's made his pit stop and as you can see, he's got caught up in his train of cars and uh, everyone's going very slowly through here. And that's going to allow Mick to get past Ericsson through the hairpin just on traction alone on this fresh rubber 
and uh, now he's right behind Lewis Hamilton and can he possibly try and make a move on the British driver now through this next section because obviously like I said Lewis and just the rest of these guys are getting caught up in traffic so it's a good opportunity to make any sort of overtake if possible and as you can see going through the Paloma corner a little bit of a bump on the front nose of uh, Mick Schumacher on Lewis Hamilton's rear end there similar to Vettel and uh, Lewis in back in real life but um, as you can see Derek is wide open now Mick's got a good run on Hamilton and uh, Mick's just going to try and go nice and late on the brakes Hamilton not deciding to go for a move on Magnussen on the brakes that's going to be a nice comfortable the brother take from Mick Schumacher up into P14 getting past Lewis Hamilton now and um as we go into the start of lap 7, he's got a nice bit of slipstream on Magnussen. And also, look at this, Alonso's a sitting back even with the RS wide open. And Mick goes to the inside of Rosberg, exiting the pit lane on the inside. It's going to be very close for a second there. But Mick pulls it off and makes the move. But then there's contact with Alonso. And Alonso ends up going for a spin in turn 1. So we're going to have to try and watch a replay. But nonetheless, Mick doesn't get any penalties and comes out unscathed in P8. So incredible triple overtake there from Mick Schumacher. But looking... At the replay from Rosberg, so let's see what happens. He just regrounds the track, and then all of a sudden, bang! There goes the Sauber, and there I go around the outside. Or should I say, Mick goes around the outside, and um, he eventually takes the inside line and forces Rosberg to sit behind him. But now, looking on board with Fernando Alonso, the man in question right now. Ocon goes up the inside and there's Rosberg and there goes Mick up the inside of everyone through the gap getting past everybody and then Alonso just gets caught up and um, oh that's a bit of a tight one to call um, I don't know what to call it let me know in the comments down below guys who you think was at fault there or was it just a racing incident so just let me know in the comments down below but um, either way continue on with the action here and uh, Mick is right behind Felipe Nazar in the sub doing a pretty good job up in 7th place so far but that's going to be short lived as Mick makes a move up the inside just about there we go in the second apex of the right hand he pulls off the move on the brakes and Nazar getting the measure of the German driver but eventually Mick on the fresh compound rubber makes the move for P6 and um Moving now midway onto lap eight, should I say the start of lap eight. And Mick is right behind Esteban Ocon now. And Carlos signs in the Jaguar. And here we go then. Mick going around the outside. Picking up the traction on Ocon. Who's on some older hard tyres. And look at that. The speed on Mick and the Manico is going around the outside. Absolutely incredible stuff. A purple first sector as well. Just for um, just for his troubles. And he gets up into P5 around the outside there. Making a nice move on Esteban Ocon. And then later on that lap now behind Carlos Sainz. Like I said the Jaguar driver. And again a good run out of the exit of the Panama corner. He's going to open up DRS. And that's the question of how long can Sainz last. Before the manager just flies past like the rocket ship it is. And there you go around the outside. Look at the speed in the Manico. And the Carlos Sainz is absolutely defenseless. And that's going to be Mick Schumacher up into uh, P4. Meanwhile, Sainz peels off into the pit lane anyway. So there you go. Uh, Sainz pretty much, uh, <laughs> he's had enough. He doesn't want to battle with the Manor car because he's just a little bit too quick in a straight line. But um, as you can see now, focusing on lap 12 now, we've got um, a couple of cars in the pit lane here, I believe. And... Um, it's going to promote Mick up into second place for now on lap 13. But looking at the lap times, you can see on the screen right now. And uh, look at the consistency from the manner. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. Mick doing a great job of pumping in some good lap times on these hard tyres. And he's keeping the two silver arrows behind him at bay. Flo the gap floating around a second to 1.5 just outside the RS range. And Mick's just doing a fantastic job of doing that. However, now on lap 15, Ocon is out of the race. So um, will that possibly trigger a safety car? Or a virtual safety car. I have to wait and see. But so far, nothing's given. So I think... No. Okay, there we go. Virtual safety car. So Ocon out of the race. That's triggered a virtual safety car. So we're going to just quickly catch a replay of what happened to the Frenchman. And as you can see, going for the hairpin. He's behind his teammate, Kevin Magnussen. As you go through this next swooping right hand, I think the Renault... He's going to have some sort of problem here as we go through the apex and then Ocon. Oh, there you go. The Renault Power Unit just has enough. It seizes up and he's going to pull over to the side of the track. And that's the end of Ocon's race here at the very hot and humid Malaysia circuit. But either way, very unfortunate for Ocon. But we're going to cut back to the live action here. And as you can see now, the virtual safety car is about to end. So obviously, makes want to try and get up to speed. And he times it to absolute perfection and actually opens up the gap and extends the gap to both of the Mercedes by a little bit. And as we move on to the end of lap 16, now looking in the bottom left hand corner, Lewis, who's in third place, comes in for his, his second and final stop of the race so that's something to take into account now for Mick and the manager as Lewis makes his first stop of the race he was the second choice Mercedes so that's very interesting there from Mercedes but right now it's going to force uh, Mick's hand into a pit stop here for his final stop of the race onto another set of uh, hard tyres he was looking to possibly strap on the mediums but because of Lewis's pit stop it's basically forced him and they makes going to have to come in for another set of hards and just try and take those to the end without any issues whatsoever Rosberg also coming in just behind Mick Schumacher it's going to be a little bit of a pit stop battle between these two guys and the question is who's going to come out ahead in theory Mick's got the gap and uh, even if a man doesn't have a particularly great pit stop it should be enough to keep him ahead so here we go then hitting our marks for the pit stop let's see if Mick comes out ahead of Rosberg yes he does just so um Mercedes really gave Rosberg a good stop there but Mick 
just about had the measure of him and he's going to hold on to uh, the position and it looks like Hamilton is nowhere near on track it looks like Hulkenberg is the man who's behind Hulkenberg and Perez both of them starting on hard tyres and they've gone straight to another set of hard so they're both in the race for now but now on lap 20 Hamilton got past Hulkenberg and this is when things get tasty because look at the lap Mix just pumped him but then look at that lap from Lewis Hamilton absolutely incredible stuff and it's time that Lewis Basically, he's turned up here in Malaysia. This is time. He's cranked up the Mercedes Pagan. and he's cranked up everything that, that Silveraro has to give. And it's time for a little bit of action here at Malaysia. And here we go. The Lewis Hamilton DRS wide open. He pulls to the inside. Mix going to give him a squeeze into turn one. But Lewis still commits to the inside beautifully. Mix going to try and go around the outside. Can he possibly hang it? No, he can't. Hamilton holds on to first place there. Or, net, or should I say, a net first place as Paris is the man up front right now. But um, either way, Hamilton making a good move for the lead of the race there. However, Mick isn't finished yet as he gets a great run and a great bit of slipstream up the inside of Lewis Hamilton. Can he make it on the brakes into turn four? Yes, he does. And retakes first place. So um, Mick not lying down for Lewis Hamilton just yet. He's going to try and give him a good old fight there for first place. But as you can see now, at the end of lap 23, Perez comes in for his last stop of the race, which is going to promote uh, Mick and Lewis into provisional 1-2. And as you can see now, Lewis once again with DRS wide open. Surely he's going to go for the move. I mean, I'm very surprised if he isn't. And there he goes to the inside. Once again, Mick's going to try and squeeze him a little bit, try and put him off. But Lewis Hamilton, the three-time world champion, is not phased whatsoever. And he pulls off the move there for first place once again. And let's see if Mick can try and maybe replicate what he did to him last lap. Picking up the toe through this section and then up the inside of the next corner in turn four. Here we go then, getting a good run on Lewis Hamilton. Once again, Mick pulls to the inside. Can he go for the move on the brakes? Not quite, but he's going to still put his nose in. There's contact, locking up the right front, but Mick still holds on and makes the move stick and Lewis just doesn't pick up the traction on the exit. And that's going to be Mick still in first place. So good job from him there to hold on to the lead of the race here at Malaysia. As we now move on to the start of lap 26, I think this time Lewis is going to try and go DRS wide open, but look at this. Nico Rosberg also picking up a great run up the inside and they're both going to go up the inside of the Manicar in turn one but Mick's going to go around the outside once again and try and fight these two silver arrows but Lewis just gets the move just about and Rosberg's going to try and go around the outside but it's no use and Lewis now has taken the lead of the race and it looks like now it's going to be very hard for Mick to go back up the inside of Lewis he's a little bit further back this time he's going to try and go for a look anyway but uh, Lewis just holds on beautifully and that's going to probably relegate Mick to a permanent P2 there so now the question is can Mick should make a defend from the other silver arrow behind him as we go on to the start now of the final up of the Malaysian Grand Prix. Can Mick defend from Nico Rosberg? Rosberg's got DRS wide open right behind the man of driver. He's going to go to the outside. Mick's going to try and hold the inside on him as we go into turn one. Rosberg very nice and late on the brakes. Going around the outside of his fellow countrymen. Can he take the inside on for the next corner? Yes, he does. Mick's going to try and switch back on him. But there's a little bit of contact between the pair of them. And that's going to allow Rosberg to hold on to first. But Mick is not done yet. He's going to try and go around the outside and cut back to the inside rich mix enabled here on the last up of the grand prix he's going to try and go up the inside on the brakes to slow it low it down a little bit of a lock up on the right front and they're going to go side by side on the exit of this corner on the last lap of the race and surely not mick can't go around the outside here surely not Wolfsburg just gets the move up, up the inside and that makes him a try and get the run of Wolfsburg through this corner but runs out very wide onto the grass he's lost the back end and oh no he's going to go straight into the wall does he lose an end plate oh not quite just about keeping them throwing in one piece but a big crash on the last half of the race for Mick Schumacher and I think Vettel is going to maybe try and get a pass just at the last second yes he does Vettel just picking off the manor driver there right at the last second and that's going to relegate uh, Mick Schumacher to a P4 probably finish for this Grand Prix as he tries to get back up the speed on their worn dirty tyres and um as you can see, coming through the final corner, Lewis wins the Malaysian Grand Prix, and Nick is indeed going to come through for a definitive P4. Still an incredible result here for the Manicar in this Malaysian Grand Prix, and doing such a good job of holding the pace throughout the entirety of that Grand Prix. But right at the end, obviously, the pure pace of the Silver Arrows prevailed, and eventually they uh, they got the better of the Manicar. But um, looking at the final race results, you can see that Lewis wins the race ahead of his teammate Nico Rosberg, with Sebastian Vettel rounding off the podium, and then Mick bringing home a brilliant P4, also Perez in a, in a brilliant P5 from 13th on the grid and then Bottas and Hulkenberg in 6th and 7th also Hulkenberg from P12 on the grid and then Verstappen and Ricardo down in 8th and 9th so disappointing from them meanwhile looking at driver standings now Mick a couple of points behind Wolfsburg he's still got a chance to get in 2nd place but right now Lewis is a country mile ahead of everybody else in the championship and also in the constructors manner holding 4th place fairly comfortably but um, nevertheless guys that was the Malaysian Grand Prix if you did enjoy it then a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated on the video and also if you subscribe to my channel with future content like this and also other F1 content and MotoG GP content that'd be absolutely fantastic and if you did miss the videos on screen right now do as you go check them out if you haven't done so already but i thank you so much for watching guys and hopefully i'll see you in the next episode very soon so from me goodbye